We're talking with a woman of many talents. She's an author, outdoor enthusiast, hiker, dog owner, photographer, writer, adventurer, gardener, flower expert, the list goes on and on. Our chat with Amy Grisak coming up on this episode of We're No Damn Experts. Best damn podcast, the best damn town. You want to get up, get ready to get down. Welcome to the greatest damn town in Montana, Great Falls. I'm Rebecca Ingham. I'm Shannon Newth. And, and we're <laughs> Whoa. sorry. We're no damn experts. We Where are. are you going with that? I was you gonna were say, jumping right in. I was. I was getting a little ahead of myself. So um I'm Rebecca I feel Ingham. Incomplete. I'm Shannon Newth. And we're, we're no, no damn, damn experts. experts. We got to nail that in order for this episode to do well. I feel incomplete now not doing that. Okay. I was going to say together we're no damn experts. And I'm like, no, that's not the way we do that. I mean, we can. No. Just threw it all off. Yeah. I should have told you beforehand. (laughs) It's okay. It's okay. This is good. It's off to a good start. Let you be in the driver's seat from now on. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Really? I have this on record. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. She's now in charge. (laughs) I'm just the pretty face in the room now. There you go. But no one can see. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz it's a podcast. Yep. Without That's the way we right like now. it. <laughs> All right. Well, how about we dive in with our guest who's who's in the studio who's with getting us. Getting to watch this unfold and questioning her decision to come on with us uh, uh today we have amy grisak on hello. hello thank you for being here thank you so much for asking me i was looking forward to this all week well yeah. wonderful and that says a lot because you were out camping in the wilderness this week yes well not quite wilderness oh. but newland reservoir okay yes. oh yeah. yeah beautiful area it's nice it's cool where is newland reservoir newland is just about to the junction where of uh, white sulfur springs okay it's on the little belts there oh, okay yeah. perfect gotcha Right on the water. It is. Mm, and Amy, lovely. you spend a lot of, t- you're a Great Falls gal? Not originally, but okay. I've been here for 17 years now. Okay. Yes. So I was over cool. in the Flathead. My husband grew up in Great Falls. Okay. And then he came back. He worked for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks mm. and managed to get back home. And I was more than happy to come over to the sunny side. Yeah, Woo. that's so right. So found you. He's like, I've got, got a brighter place for you oh, in the yeah. world. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's I was a little concerned because Great Falls seems so much bigger than the Flathead. Yeah. But it's this total small town feel and you know everybody and I absolutely love it. Absolutely Great. fit right in. So where so Grant's orig- Grant's from here, you were yes. from the Flathead. Yeah. Originally. Well, I'm originally from Ohio, but I've okay. been out thirty five years okay. now. So mm-hmm. I basically Went to Ohio State after high school. Did not like it. The one Ohio bit. State. The, the oh, you're right. The Ohio State. That's the way you have to They're say that. They're very precise about I that. Did yeah. not like the Ohio okay. State. <laughs> <laughs> and ended up being hired over the phone at the Isaac Walton Inn in Essex. Oh, oh wow. Didn't know anybody. Figured I had a job. They provided housing. Packed up ten days later and moved oh out. Oh my gosh. And oh, absolutely wow. love it. And they're still dear friends of mine. They're up in Loma. Yeah. now and everything so yeah wow. so best move just made the leap and that is such a pretty place too yeah. it's gorgeous was it that your first time in like real mountains real like experience like that i had actually come out that christmas so that was march of 90 mm-hmm. and so i'd come out over christmas with my stepdad's secretary at he was a Director of Special <laughs> Services. Okay. Yeah. No, there's, so there's, there's like no there's, backstory yeah. there. It's totally <laughs> like, that's <laughs> random. <laughs> but I had, yeah, after I left Ohio State, I bolted. I'm like, I'm moving to Montana. You know, I mm. knew nobody. And they ended up having a place in Whitefish. And okay. they said, well, if she wants, she can come out with us. And and so, yeah, he, I, she feels like a $165 ticket on Amtrak with them. Oh, I, nice. You know, I knew Chris from just stopping in and saying hi to Greg and you know, yeah. just saying hi to her. But, yeah, with her and her family, I mean, it was a whole... <laughs> Epic adventure because we had, it's about seven hours from where I grew up to Chicago, which is where we had to pick up the train. And so we, and it's, you know, middle of December and we're almost to where we need to be at what the Grand Union Station, I think it is. And the 
tire's making a funny noise. So we pull over. Here, the bearings had like melted together <gasps> and the tire almost came off. Oh my, oh gosh. my gosh. And we had to leave the vehicle there. They're like, you can't drive it. It's going to fall apart. Oh my gosh. And, you know, here we are. I'm, you know, like what, late 1920 or 19, I think. And, you know, so we had to leave it there, but we still had to get to the station. <laughs> there was no Uber way back then. Right. No. And so here's Pete. Uh, Stanley, my Chris Stanley's husband, she's going and or he's going and asking random people at the gas station oh if gosh. we could go with them in Chicago. This was a different time. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm yeah. like teenage, like horrified, right. like oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And How here, embarrassing. And, uh, <laughs> and here it was a pastor and his wife, and they're like, oh, oh we I have to lucky. make yeah. a few stops because we had all the skis. We need something where we could oh put my skis gosh. on. Yeah, and we made it thankfully. And then on the way back, it was the day after New Year's, and. We had to call. I remember the guys Moose and Grant were at the gas station there. <laughs> had to call Moose His and name Grant. Was Moose? Oh yeah, gosh. Moose and Grant. And they had fixed the car in the two weeks that we were gone. And you know, the guys like, "Hey, if you ever come back through here, <laughs> I remember yeah. that Moose." <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, baby. But yeah, it was quite the epic adventure. My and first time. And just to out. clarify, the Grant of Moose and Grant is not it's the Grant not that you're married exactly. to now. It's okay, not just the well, Grant. Isn't that something? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I was like, sorry, Miss. Man, that would have been no. awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, I met that Grant at the end of my drive over oh. in Kalispell. Oh. I lived at this little pink house on a little stream, and he was working for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. So they were putting in a fish trap. But, okay, so then I have to back up. Prior okay. to living there, <laughs> I lived in Corum. Okay. Oh, Which, yeah. you know, the canyon has quite the reputation that it you know, does. normally I tell, would tell people I'm from West Glacier. Okay. <laughs> not yeah. Cool. Not far. Okay. Yeah. And so you have this like healthy distrust of the government when you come from there. <laughs> So I'm like, what's the man doing? <laughs> Plus, I peeled off all this sod to make gardens and dumped it over a bank. And the, I'm like, I'm not sure if that's even legal. I got to distract <laughs> this guy. So, so I distracted him and then ended up marrying him. Yeah, yeah. good yeah. distraction. Yeah. You married the He's government man. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He never suspected a thing. <laughs> right. I know, exactly. Still distracting like, him to this day. I'm trying yeah. to, trying to. Yeah. But, well, that yeah. does give us some great insight yeah. into yeah. your tenacity <laughs> and completely understanding understand your it's love like, of the wilderness now that's right <laughs> yeah was that is that it sounds like this is part of your personality but really at 19 especially to not let the car breaking down stop mm -hmm. you like you just showed up yeah. in montana in the wilderness and and yeah. did that is well, that kind of par for the course for seems, your you know, life kind of reckless yeah. without thinking <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah no, <laughs> no. I, I was thinking yeah, more brave yeah, yeah. 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 No, at that. So, you know, when I came out with Chris and Pete, as you know, saw Montana, it's like, yeah, this is really, really cool. Really loved it. And then when I went home, my plan was to go to uh, Montana State University for a wildlife biology degree. Mm. But it's very hard. Well, and I was also accepted in Missoula, too. But it's very hard to find an apartment when you're getting the newspaper a week late yeah. And, yeah and so then i ended up just seeing the ad for the isaac walton just and it's like well i know where that is because i remember seeing it when we came through and so that was it. i just called him and moved out so, so did you end up going to msu no nope. okay and then so i moved out essex ended up meeting a guy and packing gear for he was a cinematographer wildlife cinematographer and then Ended up working for National Geographic Television on programs for them for about 10 years. That's Holy so moly. BBC and uh, WNET back in New York and everything. That is so, so cool. Yeah. So My little TV Just be open to the world. Out. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So I did originally, like I said, pack mule because... Well, obviously in high you school. You were the pack mule or I you was were working pack. with pack? Okay. No, I was, I was the pack yeah. mule because, you know, obviously I'm five feet tall. So basketball, other sports aren't my thing. I was a power lifter. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, oh, oh, I so, don't understand that. I, yeah. I was not a power lifter. <laughs> can, yeah. Wow. It's like a pack She gear. went the track route. Yes. Yeah. I went the running route. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. we're, yeah, we're similar heights. Yeah, that's under, it. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to be, you know, going underneath right. someone's legs. That's we're right. not going around him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did power lifting. Oh so. Oh, I could pack gear, and so that's how I got into Did that. Did you compete in it ever, or was it was for the purpose of packing? No, things? no, I, yeah, <laughs> okay. no, I competed. I was a uh, won Ohio, Montana nationals and world. Oh my gosh! So for my weight class and Holy everything. Cow. So yeah, so it was I just like moly. So glad she's here. We're just peeling back all the <laughs> accolades. I love it. <laughs> Not that we knew a lot about Amy when right. we started. Okay, let's just get that straight, but. We knew some stuff. 
Yeah. Not bad. No. This yeah. is the no. deepest layer we've oh, ever gotten. Funny. So this I is awesome. Love it. Do yeah. you still do any power lifting? Not actual power lifting. No, no, not power lifting. Heading yeah. to the gym right after this. Nice. Definitely still love the gym. And that's good. It well, didn't ruin you on it. No, you know? oh, no. Yeah. And that's with my backpack these days, it still translates well because I mm. seem to pack everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it's like <laughs> cardio. No, if you yeah. make me go up a hill, we're going to be going slow. But, uh, I but have, you can carry all I the things. I can carry a yeah. small village. I mean, yeah. create a small village if need be. See, this would work. I'll go up the hill and you <laughs> yeah. can carry the things and we'll make, yeah. You just wait with, for sna with snacks Perfect. for me. Yep. Perfect. We, uh, my aunt and I went and did the crazy mountains oh. and I got this pack and was getting everything ready and my husband's like you need more stuff you need more stuff i'm like actually no. i don't like i know how to do this i don't need more stuff by the time he had my pack oh no packed <laughs> I could have survived in the wilderness exactly. with an army of 800 <laughs> wild men oh, no. for a year. Oh, and I'm my. like, this is way too much stuff. He's like, I need you to be prepared. Yep. I want you to come back out. Oh, I've done this in the past yeah. and I've come back <laughs> out. You know this because I'm here today. Oh, That's my gosh. Right. So, That's it. yeah, I learned uh, backpacking married to him is a oh. bit more of a challenge. Not because he goes with, but because he's worried the entire time he's, I'm gone because I'm oh, going to no. get eaten yeah. by a bear or kidnapped by he's, oh, he's a worry oh, yeah. yeah it's yeah. his favorite thing to do oh. so um, <laughs> no. i'm like this is this is a bit much and it's my fun. aunt's like you know better than this i'm like I, what what do you do like this is the only way i was going to get out of the house yeah, just leave it. some in yeah. the car before you yeah, actually exactly. hike. Yeah. repack mm -hmm. repack when you go i did yeah uh, in the parking lot she's like this is insane. I'm like, I know. I know. Yeah. I tend to overpack just, well, number one, being a mother is, mm -hmm. you know, now thankfully the boys can pack all their own stuff. Yeah. In it, but it's a hard trait to kind of set aside. Mm. So you're always packing it. And then depending on who's going with us, I get a lot of new people who mm. go with me, which I yeah. love. But, but I'm always packing extra gear just smart. in case they forget. That's right. smart. So yeah. that's, that's a friend of mine. We went earlier this year and. I had my nor I know I wear a backpacking pack just for my day pack. One mm. is because of the comfort and I use my big camera and have it on my mm. shoulder or on the strap there and it the whole pack carries it well. A smaller one, a smaller frame. It's gonna be all yes, discombobulated. It yeah. Makes something go numb. Yeah. So but <laughs> she was like, Well, why are you packing that? You know, I just have this little one. I said, and that's why. That's why because <laughs> that is not enough. You just mm. because it was, yeah, a little tiny tiny. So yeah. I'm mm. ready and hopefully have everything for everybody else. <laughs> well, so I'm sure go, everyone else appreciates that. Go, yeah. <laughs> go, go into with the Amy. wilderness yeah. with Amy. Yeah. She will <laughs> be prepared. You because you've helped lead like the, mm, oh, I just forgot, Wild Montana. I don't think oh. I'm saying that right. Yes. Oh, I, I am. I Yes. And you've, I have. You've guided, guided for them, um, mm -hmm. offered to be past. the leader. Yeah. And then we also learned that you're part of the women who adventure, explore. explore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Part of that group. I don't lead those. Episodes, yeah. Yeah. But, but you're a part, yeah, you part of that. Yep. Yeah. They're a great mm -hmm. group. Absolutely. That was really fun. To, we talked about this year's ambassador, or okay. we talked with this year's ambassadors, Katrina and Raisha, and they were so fun. And it was so neat to see because it's different experience levels it's Absolutely. different interests so it seems like a really welcoming group and i got so it's part of a worldwide mm -hmm. organization it is women who explore yeah you this is this is some as someone who lives in great falls so my travel for vacation involves going elsewhere but they they have a trip to kenya where you go uh, hang out with the giraffes that would be from fun. the women who explore next year are you going i want to i my <laughs> husband would probably want to come and it's a Ooh, woman it's thing. a woman uh, just yeah. for women yeah. but yeah you go like you hang out with the giraffes. giraffes yeah and they have one they have like dog sledding in northern lights in finland or something oh, they're doing yeah. all kinds they of do. cool trips as a global organization awesome. yeah. anyway that's just yeah. a side note i okay. got really right. excited yeah yeah but on the local level mm -hmm. it is a great way for women to connect and everything yeah, and yeah it's a very encouraging group yeah, they're just fabulous. It sounded like that, as it, both for people who live here and for people who are coming to visit. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about that. Like, if you're traveling and you want to be able, you don't just want to go on your own on exactly. a trail. Like, hook up with this group yeah. and somebody's constant. I've joined the chat now, oh, since we, and it's like constant people it is. Yeah, planning right. stuff. 
Well, and that's the other thing I like about the wild Montana hikes is mm-hmm. when they schedule those mm-hmm. and you're told to meet at this location and you get to go with a group of people and go see things you've never seen before. Yeah. And you meet people that stay mm-hmm. friends. That's mm-hmm. I have a number of friends that will just be hiking in a group and it's like, oh, how did you meet her? You know, like my friend Rosanna. And it's like, oh, it was a hike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then her. you yeah. just I click. And then, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it's like you've been friends for so long. And it's like, yeah, that's how we met was on one of those hikes. That's neat. Yeah. Uh, so if we've not already said it, yeah. Amy is an we avid hiker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's right. yes. <laughs> and she's been doing this since she first got here, hauling things, which we call <laughs> yeah. hiking yes. right. Um, yeah, you're right. as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in addition to that, you're also an author. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And what do you write about? A lot of outdoor related topics. So I have the two books. I have the Mm -hmm. Nature Guide to Glacier and Waterton Lakes National Park. Which we are holding right here. She brought us a copy. And you can't see it because it's a podcast. That's right. Yes, we established that Are the pictures yours as well? Half and half. Okay. uh, Because this was my very first book. So when the editor came to me and he's like, Hey, can you do this in ten months? And being the rookie, I'm like, oh, sure, sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone else has said no. Right? Yeah, exactly. I'm willing. Yeah. But yeah. I told him up front. I said, you know, I've been in the park for over thirty years and have not gotten a full frame shot of a wolverine. What can we do? Oh. So we were able to use photos from Flickr, common use, or you know, yeah, unco- yeah. no copyright on mm-hmm. them. So. That was good. So it will put those together. And birds. Birds give me fits. I mean, I rented some 600 millimeter lenses at times. And I have, like, great bird butts. And blurry <laughs> bird photos. I mean, just fabulous. Yeah, you're fantastic yeah. at that. Yeah. Fabulous. But, like, if you can... But, really, that's probably you what should I should have... should make a bird butt book. I know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's yeah. probably what I should have put in there. Because that's how people are going to identify <laughs> yeah. them anyway. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. You're never going to see their face. Right. So you're going to have to be able to figure <laughs> out what they look yeah. like from their face. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> yeah. I, um... <laughs> I have a tattoo and this reminds me of this situation and my mom did not know I got it. And Uh so she's like, when did you get this? And I'm like, well, I don't know. And she's like, you know, if you were to end up dead in a morgue, I wouldn't be able to identify your body because I wouldn't have known. I'm like, the only way you'd be able to identify (laughs) me is to go, oh, no, that that's in the most inconspicuous place on planet Earth. You wouldn't be able to look at my face and go, that was her. (laughs) That's that's my daughter. (laughs) Flip her over. Let me (laughs) see. see. (laughs) I'm like, unbelievable. But at least with bird butts, it does make sense. So that's why it made me think of that. It's more likely you'll be identifying. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Get the bird butts. By their butts. Yeah. (laughs) But that's right. (laughs) Yeah. Good. (laughs) So you have this glacier book, and what's your other one? And then the other one's called Found Photos of Yellowstone, Mm -hmm. and that was published by Riverbend in Helena, who's since sold to Falcon and the whole conglomerate there. But that one's so a friend of mine in Billings, Michael Francis, phenomenal photographer. I've known him for over 30 years. He's collected Yellowstone photos for 50 years. Wow. Oh, photo wow. albums, like at estate sales and everything. Mm-hmm. So these are all photos that from the tourist and the employee perspective oh. that have never been published before. Oh, cool. And so it was from 1890 to 1940. Holy moly. Yeah. Yep. So a lot of research there. And then we worked with Lee Whittlesey, who was the park historian for like 40 years. Wow. And he would just, del- he's a walking encyclopedia when it comes to the history of the park. And he's written t- dozens of books, I mm-hmm. think, on Yellowstone. But so, yeah, he helped correct and, you know, make sure I had my facts right. Because sometimes things that are even published, like on the National Park Service page, are not true. <laughs> you know, for example. Dang, can't yeah, trust there's anything. really a lot of yeah. misinformation yeah. Uh, well, out like there. Roosevelt Lodge. The mm-hmm. whole yeah. mythology behind it is Teddy Roosevelt camped there. And he never did. Mm. So yeah. it's like, okay, so we, you know, so we had to kind of correct that in the yeah. book and everything. But mm. that was fascinating cool. because it showed things that are no longer there. Like there were massive bathhouses, swimming pools mm. at Old Faithful and Mammoth. So oh, yeah. at Old Faithful, you look out, it, you know, heated by, I think it was Solitary Geyser, two stories tall, big log is 100 feet long, heated pool. Wow. I yeah. know. Huh. It was great. And then Mammoth too. And, huh. you know, and then another feature at Mammoth that it's still there, but you're not allowed to go is called Devil's Kitchen. Mm. It's this basically uh, extinct geyser 
Oh. And they would take a ladder, like in the 20s and the 30s, and take a ladder and go Ooh. down. And they're like, oh, yes, and then there's queer sensations at the bottom of it. And I'm like, yeah, that's the poisonous gas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. No, there's a reason. Exactly. Right. There's a good reason some of this is no yeah. longer available. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. well, they even had like an ice cream and snack stand. Called Devil's Kitchenette there. Oh, so you come out all goofy and go get <laughs> yourself like, oh, an ice cream. Got munchies now. Yeah, yeah. I know. Oh so, yeah, it was crazy. It uh-huh. is interesting to look at the progression of national parks, mm-hmm. especially Yellowstone being mm-hmm. the first national park, to what what was accepted when it was a first oh. national mm-hmm. park till today. <laughs> like, oh, we learned some stuff. Right. Stop feeding the animals. Yes. Don't feed them. <laughs> yeah. Don't walk over there. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You're not allowed to cook live fish and fishing <laughs> cone geyser anymore. It was right on the oh lake. My. They would catch a fish, go over, drop it in the geyser and cook it. Oh, really? And then, yeah. And then by the <laughs> 20s, they're like, well, you can't cook live fish. You could cook dead ones. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and oh now gosh. they're like, you're not cooking anything in like, the guys let's, anymore. Let's not do yeah. this anymore. I'm like, <laughs> I know. I know. You know, there's just some things that sound like a good idea at the time. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you're like, oh, eventually you're like, yeah, no. this just doesn't seem right anymore. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> we learn. We exactly. learn. And, and you we evolve. I, yeah. yeah. Let's hope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw you post about this, but the the um explosion or whatnot we're calling oh, it in biscuit basin earlier this yeah. week that's that some bizarre, crazy huh? stuff yeah yeah but and folks if you're it. listening to this it is not an indication no. that yellowstone's going to explode right. no please it is most important we, that you understand that do, do we know that though are we, we going to learn uh, later no, <laughs> no. i actually just did an article <laughs> six months ago for rock and gem magazine uh-huh. and interviewed a gentleman at the let's see yellowstone volcanic observatory and that's so it it won't explode. It would more ooze. Oh. And that's oh. the nature when they look back, you know, through the geological record. Yeah. It wasn't a big, it was, you know, oozing. It, it's mm. really fascinating. And, you know, he said they got monitors on everything and there's really no indication. But, yeah, it's not as dramatic as we all because they're like, oh, if that goes, we're all toast. Yeah. You know, well, I been, mean, if Yellowstone goes, we are all toast. If it goes, but, but just we're the not nature of it. Like if it yeah. just oozes for the rest of its life, yeah. we're safe. Yeah, yeah right. that's right. We so. can run away from an ooze. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Even yes, I can, can all that. escape an ooze. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. With my poor cardio. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you, you'll make yeah. it. I right. did just hear on TikTok, which I'm sure 100% of that's, everything on TikTok is accurate. For sure. The last time anything matters have happened down in Yellowstone was 600,000 plus years ago. So a little bit sooner than that volcanic, but it's still like tens of thousands. So, yeah. so yeah. if that pattern continues, I think we're, we're good. Okay. We're okay. We're okay. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Like, I'm not the, losing and before that <laughs> one, it was a million years before yeah, that. So, so it's, I mean, we're, we're ancient. Good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Well, we don't want to say that because then people are like, oh, it's time then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I think we got you know, about yeah. 500,000 yeah. more years. Yeah. We don't no, have that's to worry too much about it. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. Well, you look here. at it. Yeah. We were all underwater here in Great Falls right. at one we time. We were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. the other. So I'm not worried about that either. Right. <laughs> you know what? The amount of things we're not <laughs> worried about. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Yep. Mm-hmm. I know. Uh, so you do, you've written the books. You talk about how you write articles for all kinds of things i I saw you do videos on plants and things for north 40 oh yeah i was watching those and i was like i need to watch amy's (laughs) videos because she was explaining different tomato plants so you just you know all the things yeah Yeah. i've been (laughs) gardening since i've been 10 okay so early early on and then of course you know you start in ohio where you can put a basically broomstick in the ground and it's going to grow and it's going to okay. sprout and then move out here where you have to start watering in April. Yeah. You yeah, know, you got that type a little thing. more of a challenge yeah. here. So it was definitely, definitely different learning in Montana. And then when I was in West Glacier or Quorum, I can say that now. <laughs> Quorum. Yeah. Now yeah, the so people are... and they have stoplights and everything over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but, we were just there July 4th. I mean, it, it's better, <gasps> but go to the um, hungry horse. We, well, we were, we ended up on Flathead Lake, but I've always wanted to stop at Packer's Roost. Oh, I've never, I lived within walking distance. I never went there. Oh, that <laughs> probably means It was definitely an experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely yeah. an experience. And from that, you're like, well, they've progressed a little, but. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nope. Never. Coldest spot I went to, 4th of July weekend. Oh, I bet. Yeah, coldest. Was, yeah, I bet. So it was coldest. what, in the 80s? No, like their air conditioner was working oh, so well, okay. you had to okay. 
But a lot wow. of that's saying something that's something for, for me. Yeah. yeah. Just saying. <laughs> well, that's a good time. Anyway. Gardening over there, there was no soil. I mean, I remember deciding before we even built the house, put I got the shovel, I was going to make a garden, and it was just rock. So mm. I started popping those up, and I ended up building 220 raised beds out of stone. Oh, my, oh my God. <laughs> Jeez, then, Amy. It's yeah. 14 dump truck loads of dirt over several years oh to be able my to film. Gosh. This but is why you're a pack horse. Yeah, that's you're building right. the stone <laughs> beds. Like I the can't, dunk, yeah. can't dunk a ball, but yeah, <laughs> I can haul some This rock. is much more useful. Yeah. This yeah. is useful. So yeah, so did that. And then, of course, moving over here, I'm like, oh, we're going to have sunshine. We're going to have this. And it's like, Oh, the yes, soil however, is horrible. The soil, the soil is terrible. <laughs> yeah. And the wind, and it's even drier. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, everywhere I've gone, I've had to relearn gardening, mm -hmm. which has been, it's good. I mean, because it never gets boring. Right. And then yeah. when people, and the great thing too, so, you know, I used to write for the Great Falls Tribune, uh -huh. did a lot there. And then, of course, with North 40. And so over the, and then helped start the community gardens, River City mm -hmm. Harvest. Because when oh, we yeah, moved no. here, I thought for sure we had to have community gardens because yeah. we had the Air Force Base. Yeah. But there weren't. Mm -hmm. So worked with Wade, Wade Crouch, who was the extension agent at the time. And uh, I didn't, we weren't friends at the time, but this is Dev Olenek. We all coordinated and we got River City Harvest going. And so just dealing with everybody there and everybody asking gardening questions is great because then you learn even more because mm -hmm. it's like that bugs. I've never seen that one <laughs> eating my beets. Yeah. But, you know, but so you get gardening questions and learn from there and help educate others, too. Because yeah. trying, I guess, with the bulk of my writing, one of my biggest goals is taking away the intimidation factor mm. for whatever it is. If it's gardening, hiking, camping. It doesn't matter. Or identifying flowers, you know, yeah. just taking away that it's like, this isn't rocket science. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it can feel yeah. like it, though, to Sometimes. some of us. Yeah. 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 But, and especially with gardening, every year is different. I mean, this is like bizarro year. We're so cold in the spring yeah. and and now it's blistering hot. Mm hmm. Yeah, I miss the window. I always like to, you know, the extent of my gardening, and I'm using air quotes, folks, is <laughs> getting the annual flowers from Flower Farm and putting mm -hmm. them in some yeah. pots. Like, I can get that done. Yeah. Um, miss the window. Again, like, it every was, weekend I was going to go get flowers. It was just a little too cold. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. eh. and then by the time it was time, it's too hot. Too and hot. All the flowers are gone. And so gone, like, yeah. yeah. I gave up on flowers at our house <laughs> completely. Now because, yeah, I put, I tried this year just to see in a pot, I put wildflower seeds in oh, the nice. pot to see oh. if they would, I don't know if they're even going to come up before oh. the end. Oh, but no. our house is, and I, we're very fortunate, we live in a great location, but it gets just be down with the sun there's no oh. shade like it comes on it off the house so it gets very hot and so they'll the flowers would be okay for a few weeks in june and then all of a sudden they're done. done dead and i'm like i'm tired of spending money on flowers for like two weeks I and know. then and so trying to keep the garden too which i've noticed our cucumbers seem to be thriving okay. in the heat and they took a while and now finally things are coming but yep. it's been an adventure <laughs> mm -hmm. and then the hail yeah. this year mm -hmm. too everything was really kind of clicking and coming in and then the hail came and it's like oh we're going to defoliate everything yeah. <laughs> you get to start over yeah. but everything's bouncing now you just keep enough yeah. water on it yeah and the wind over here is definitely a challenge yeah. we're up on gore hill which mm -hmm. I realized after we bought the house is the windbreak for great falls yeah yep. yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I live up there as well oh, cool. and what I tell my husband is when you marry a princess, we live on the top of the hill. And so oh, that's go. just the hazard to the lifestyle. Yeah. Um, but the wind and the weather patterns up there mm -hmm. are completely different than in town. Yeah. It's 300 feet difference in elevation. And you're right. It could be snowing up that's there. So interesting. And then you come into town and it's fine. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. So it's weird. But it's weird. You know, I've had to mitigate with actually planting closer to fences which is something i never would have done prior because of the shade factor mm -hmm. but oh. it's like that's what i needed and so huh. things would do better there and really kind of protect and then of course you have to fence off everything because <laughs> of the deer the, uh -huh. oh. You know. <laughs> oh yes rebecca has stories about her deer shannon friends. has heard my <laughs> me lament more than once about <laughs> the deer population <laughs> that the rodents with hooves yes, oh. yes. <laughs> yeah. and the 
the boldness of oh, them yeah. oh yeah to crawl up on my deck <gasps> and eat my petunias right next oh, to no. the oh, right no. next to the front door they're just like looking at you like and Thanks. i'm like hey, get off my deck and they look at me like what are you gonna do about <laughs> yeah, it yeah, that's so right. like, Make me. yeah one day yeah one day <laughs> one day like oh yes it's not there. gonna they're, yeah. they're beautiful. Love them. I mean, love watching them and everything. Yeah. And then we'll have antelope behind us, you know, when mm-hmm. the, but I love, because they never bother a thing. They just stand there and look pretty. Yeah. Yep. So I love mm-hmm. antelope. Yeah. yeah. Antelope, I'm fine with. Yeah. They're the just... deer, we, we have a, we have open field behind us. So the deer walk uh-huh. back and forth. And I love seeing that. And yeah. they don't bother our stuff. Oh, so good. it's kind of the best of both worlds. That's mm. it. That's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to run. <laughs> Although the one thing Sorry. I do love on the east side that I never had on the west side, or the I love badgers. Oh. And, you know, we have so many ground squirrels up there. I mean, just teeming. Mm-hmm. And, oh, I love it when the badgers, and I walk and sometimes get a gl- glimpse of the badgers. And, you know, my dog, Zeke, he yes. wants to go play with the badgers, too. Oh, oh yeah. That doesn't like, seem no, like a good plan. Bad, yeah. bad idea, Zeke. Trust me on this one. Yeah. <laughs> so how many days out of the year do you get out and <laughs> hike? Because I think you do fall in winter stuff. As I well. do. I mean, I'm out doing something every week. Usually it's not as much as I want, but that's just the reality <laughs> of life at times. But no, it's you got to get out throughout the year. And the thing is, you know, they say there's no bad weather, just bad clothing, which is <laughs> the absolute truth. <laughs> you know, it's although what's funny and, you know, working with Nash, for National Geographic or for those programs over the years, you know, oh. I learned that yeah. because I mean, I was doing sound recording up in Jasper, which is like half burned right oh, now, yeah. which yeah. is killing me. Did a program actually called Giants of Jasper. We were mm. focusing on bighorn sheep that are up in Jasper, oh, but then also cool. did all the peripheral animals, the whole story there. Yeah. But it was right around Thanksgiving one year and, you know, it was 30 below, but you had Oof. to, it was during the rut. So, I mean, I had, you know, we have such wonderful sound equipment now. Yeah. Back then was a digital audio tape, a D, yeah, know, there a are DAT a recorder, that you had and to it haul. kept shutting down. So I had to shove it down in my parka and have those little <laughs> heater things all over the place and just sitting there absolutely still and recording everything. So you just, you learn how to how to dress appropriately for the cold. Yeah. But what gets me is years ago, so I had my horse Kilo for years and he was in a neighbor's backyard and... Even to go feed him, I calculate it was well over six hundred dollars one time just to pull on <laughs> what you needed not gear. to die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that was like from yeah. boots that I got twenty five years ago up in Canada yeah. type thing. Yeah, and I'm like, and you know, summer's like shorts and a t shirt. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of yeah. digging that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, as long as and I do, it's you know, I'm not one for buying clothes except unless they have a function. Uh-huh. So it's like if it's the best cold weather gear, whatever, I'll drop the bucks on. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, eh, you know, twelve bucks for a shirt? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but three hundred for really that. that. I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah. I guess with that, because you're experienced and you know how to, you say there's no <clears throat> bad weather, just, just bad. bad clothes. Mm-hmm. I would agree 100%. Okay. There's a lot of bad clothes out there. That's, yeah. Well, yes, yeah. that's true. What are things, if people are going to be coming here, I mean, summer's a little bit different, but like mm-hmm. looking forward to fall and winter, people coming to visit the area, wanting to get out and explore still, because there is so much any time of year to explore around yes. here. What do you suggest people, I mean, we always say pack in layers, but mm-hmm. what does that mean for people who have not come here, but they want to come explore in the fall and winter? What kind of things should they have with them to do that? First thing, ditch the cotton. Okay. <laughs> ditch, ditch that cotton t-shirt. You know, mm. if you get sweaty, it's going to keep the moisture close to your skin versus wicking it away. That's the other thing I've been studying, trying to kind of figure out what the best fabric is for mm. that. Because we have so many great options. We have wool and uh, synthetics, which are the, you know, the technology there is just getting incredible. I love alpaca, mm. which is very, very yeah. expensive, but very, very soft and very, very good for summer or cold. Okay. Because it does just the nature of how the fibers are structured. It just pulls that away. So that makes a big difference. But a lot of people who come from other parts of the country don't realize that. So mm. you have, and I've made the mistake in the years past, you have a cotton shirt on, you get all sweaty and it just sticks to you yeah. and you stop and you just freezing Mm -hmm. you know and i have actually even gotten caught in rainstorms it was 85 degrees grant and i were hiking up to a lake for something think something (laughs) for his work okay and 
we, a rainstorm came through and we got so chilled we could barely get on our gear. Mm. I mean, just and to understand that weather can change that quickly yeah. and to be prepared. So if the clouds are coming in, put the rain gear on. Don't wait until that first drop falls. Yeah. yeah. Type thing. You know, you can always take it off if it doesn't happen. Yeah. Because it's tough to warm back up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once yeah. you get chilled, it's tough to warm back up, mm -hmm. even when you put your gear on. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah. And a lot of these, I know, like you're talking about the alpaca. I'm pretty sure they have that like socks and stuff. I think our friends down at Bighorn Outdoor Specialists are a great place oh, they are. to go and find yeah. some of these layering options. Oh, they good do. Yeah. yeah. And they have the good shoes. I'm not yes. going to say cute. <laughs> some of them are. <laughs> But one of the biggest things, and we've all been there, like in high school, you have to wear your winter boots to school yeah. and they're hideous and gross. So you want to have <laughs> the cute ones. The cute ones aren't warm, folks. Yeah. No. You got to get the ugly <laughs> yeah, ones if right, you want right. warm feet. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. you're right. And that in the long run, just yeah. go better. With warm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's it. <laughs> But no, yeah. the they, folks at Bighorn, I mean, because they're so knowledgeable because they are in the field, too. Yes. I mean, everybody who works there, they know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be able to help you. And when it comes to footwear, too, because one pair may work well for somebody and it doesn't for somebody else. Yeah. Yep. And it's always that kind of like no foot, no horse concept. If your feet don't feel good, <laughs> yeah. you're not going anywhere. Very true. So, and, But they'll miserable. help you find that right fit, which is yeah. fabulous. Are there? Oh, go ahead. No, nope, I wasn't. You're the captain of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to answer your question yeah, about what yeah, to yeah. bring, sure. you know, like it is layers because you can start out hot and then mm -hmm. you, you know, or vice versa. They always say, you know, be bold, hike cold to start out with fewer <laughs> okay. layers on. Okay. Because yeah. that's, you know, a lot of times in the mornings when it's in the, I loved it, it was 48 degrees oh, this morning. It was amazing. Yeah, it felt so much cooler yeah. this morning. It's fabulous. Yeah. The windows on my house flew Same. open yeah. so quick. Like, oh, <laughs> did you feel, get yeah. the windows open. Yep. Everything was open. Everything. It was amazing. But yeah, you'll start some hikes though that, you know, in the 40s and it's just like, oh, yeah. but it's like, just Once you get resist moving. the urge. Yeah. Because if not, you're going to go 100 yards up the trail and go, oh, I got to stop. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get this crap uh, off I me. Know. That's it. Because then you're sweating. Yeah. 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 But yeah, and to prepare, always have some sort of ring gear in. So many times it's, you know, lovely, lovely weather and then a storm comes through. Mm -hmm. So one of the ones we took this year, which we still laugh about. We were up on the South Trail at Rogers Pass, and we knew weather was coming in, but, you know, keeping an eye on it and everything, and I'm, you know, like, do we, do we, everybody have stuff, and the one's like, oh, you know, it's not supposed to come in until two, and I'm like, oh, yeah, they're always right. <laughs> yeah, right. They're always right. It's always 100 so percent correct, yeah. right at two. And yeah. it, but it was one of those trails that it was just so gorgeous, and we're like, Oh, just around the corner, just around the corner. And I kept, as you could see Lincoln from there, and the storm was right over there. I'm like, okay, we just, we're going to go to here, and then we're just going to grab a bite and turn around. It's like we got there in literally two bites, and it was, <laughs> it came fast, Oof. and we were running. Oh my oh. So not all of us were able, a couple didn't even have rain gear, and I'm like, you know, the, the jacket that I had was just too small because our my friend was like six feet tall. <laughs> I'm like, I got midget rain gear, yeah. but this ain't gonna work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay for the little people. Yeah. <laughs> but so we were literally running down the trail and you know, Zeke we, he was with yeah. us. He kept turning around looking at me and whimpering like oh, we shouldn't he's like, be why here. am I here? <laughs> you know better than I this. That's <laughs> right. What are you doing to me? That's hilarious. But oh my you know, after we finally got down, it'll part way down too. I was in the rear and just the thunder from the side, mm. the right hand side. Oh boy, I jumped. <laughs> <laughs> and we we're all like, run away. Yeah. <laughs> Come quick. Oh yeah. my gosh. What are um, some of your most hmm, favorite hikes that you've done in this area? Mm. Oh gosh, that's so tough. Rogers, that that South South Trail at Rogers is definitely up there. In the winter around here, what I love is the River's Edge Trail. Yeah. I mean, we are so fortunate to have that trail. And I've not yet been able to explore everything because I tend, I don't bike 
because you oh, would yeah. find me at the bottom in the river. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, oh, chaos. Yeah. That's appropriately named. <laughs> yeah. She didn't know how to steer. Yeah, exactly. It's like she looked away. Yeah. Now, because I'd be like, not stay oh, what's that flower? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I've hiked back to Cochrane and a bit past there and everything. I'm dying to get even farther back. Yeah. Because it's just gorgeous. And then on the other side, on the north side, too, mm. it was, I mean, it's just, you know, it doesn't seem, you know, they always say the prairie has a different feel. It takes a different appreciation to look or to enjoy it. But it's just that undulating hills and then yeah. all the flowers that are coming and the rocks. And yeah, it's and then just hiking by the river itself is just absolutely gorgeous. So in the well, in the fall, once it gets cold. I'm, my thing is I'll take a grizzly any day of the week, but I don't like rattlesnakes. Yep. I'm oh. with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I usually save those hikes for later in the season and in the yeah. winter because a lot of times we don't have enough snow. Yeah. Right. You know, and so we can go anytime. It's and great. And that's the craziest thing here because less than an hour away, you're going to be waist deep in snow. But yeah. here there's no snow. Oh, yeah. And the temperature is so nice mm-hmm. that you could just put on a sweatshirt right. and go, go for a hike in the winter. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yes. And then you're yep. not dealing with the rattlesnakes no. or the bears in theory. <laughs> yeah. <at that> <laughs> time. Yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. just, and so you can go. And then the buffalo jump too. You yeah. know, and the burrowing owls, the burrowing owls have been great this year. And, you know, mm. there's just so much wildlife and it's, yeah, the buffalo jump is fabulous mm-hmm. too. That's There's one peoples. that I want to do one of their winter because yes. I don't want to deal with the snakes. The winter, like, pictograph hikes out there that's like on my list to do this winter at some point it Mm -hmm. is so much fun i've done that several times and yeah yeah, it's really fascinating to see that off trail that we don't dare right during the summer right and the you know the folks out there are just so knowledgeable too yeah so such an such a great place out there Mm -hmm. i'm an eastern montana girl so i love rocks and doing that north shore portion of the river's edge trail has so many different rock they formations mm. and it's just it's not what you expect you no. just all of a sudden happen upon these like hoodoos yes. and weird formations and you're like we got cool stuff too utah oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah that's <laughs> it and my very first fi- first and only check that off my list 5k <laughs> was that midnight <laughs> or not my full moon run oh doing oh. that north shore trail and Fun. it was before I'd even hiked it during the daytime. Mm-hmm. And so it was great. I mean, just absolutely stunning. The full moon over the Missouri River. That's cool. Perfect night in September. It was just gorgeous. But they're like, okay, watch that turn. I'm like, I'm going to end up in the middle of the prairie. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> You're going to get wandered out in the middle of nowhere uh-huh. or in the river. In the, right? Like, <laughs> I'm where's for the me? river. I don't know. Yeah. They should be able to find Somebody me if I'm in the splash. river. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Might be easier to find. That's, yeah. I did, speaking of moonlight, I did with Wild Montana when it was whatever it was before. Um, yep. One a moonlit snowshoe hike Ooh. in the high woods. Oh my! Oh. That would it have been was a blast. so fun oh, because it's just so such neat. a different feel. And then yes. we stopped and made s'mores along oh. the way. You know, I got back at I don't know two four a.m. Oh, something wow. like that, and it was just so fun. Well, oh, you okay, should be able to start a little bit earlier than like ten, right? In the winter, but it was. I mean, we went out, drove out there, hiked, whatever. By the time we did all the things, it was middle of the night when I got back. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that it was so fun. But yeah, if you have a chance, people who are visiting it to do one of these moonlit run hike, whatever. Yeah, it's really it neat. Well, mm-hmm. the at the first people's at the Buffalo Jump, they'll do that too. Mm. Moonlit mm. hikes and everything, which is Watch a total that. blast. Yeah. yeah, and they are, they're doing more astronomy programs mm-hmm. and well, just being able to see the sky. Mm-hmm. I was just, yeah. and it's the things you don't remember. Like we get it, guests. We live here, so we forget that. I was just in Tampa for a week. Oh, just you don't see the sky. No, you don't. Just so weird see to the yeah. sky. think about. No. Yeah, we take that for granted. That's true. I yeah. just actually wrote an article on it. Eighty percent of the un- United States population cannot see the Milky Way. Hmm. It's insane. Yeah, and I always forget when people come and they're like, "Oh, you can see the stars," yeah. and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> "Yes, yeah. we can." Yeah. But it's that uh, yeah. thing you take for granted. Uh, you mm-hmm. forget that. Most of the population, mm-hmm. like Amy's research shows yeah. us, yeah. <laughs> like you're not seeing much of anything when you're yeah, in these darkness. locations yeah. because there's a very, very, very tall buildings mm-hmm. and so much light pollution. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's just it's 
it's such a weird environment and such a drastic change when you come from the city. Yeah. And, and granted, we know we call Great Falls a city. It's not in reality. <laughs> Which is why we love it. It's just right? a town. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's really impressive to be able to do those things at mm-hmm. night. It is. And the moon is so bright. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then now with the smoke, of course, with that bright <laughs> orange. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It's really kind of gorgeous. That is yeah. the nice yeah. thing about fire season. It is does it make cool? for amazing really sunsets. Yeah. Colors. And, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's, and then the northern lights that happened this May. Yeah. I mean, oh, that my. was mind blowing. Mm-hmm. And I know so many people are like, oh, I'm heading out of town. I'm like, I'm standing in my backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did that too. And I could see, like, I could see it some with just my eye but when i took just even with my iphone mm-hmm. i took a picture and it was so you could like see it better in the lens. i was like wow I this know. is really cool and i'm i mean i'm in the edge of town but i'm in town still and yeah. i was able to see some oh absolutely yeah. we were down at the fred robinson bridge oh, cool. at the beginning of may and saw them and just oh, oh, oh that's it that's was awesome. so crazy mm-hmm. yeah just epic to be down there and of course no light pollution yeah and you've just got these amazing things happening all over the place. You're just going head in the sky, yep. walking yeah. around in circles. Yeah. Like, yeah. Did yeah. you see this? Oh, look yeah. at the here. Yeah. yeah. And the so, thing I loved about it the best was the next day, everybody posting pictures yeah. and everybody was happy. Right. Yeah. It's like the yes. first time ever on yeah. social media. <laughs> like, everyone like, everybody's happy to like, see that. Oh, you agree. should have taken a better picture. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. yeah. People were just, just like, happy. No, they That's were just happy. That's a good point. Yeah. Right. Such a good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a good point. We um, need more. I know. We need more nice day. Yeah. That's yeah. true. When you scrolled, you just saw that. It was just joy. It was like throughout almost the entire world, it was just joy. That. It was a really good point. Very special. Yeah. 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 So hopefully more. I want to ask you, um, because you talk about being distracted by flowers and your plants, and you write about that in here. You've written articles about it. Um, In this area, when you go out on hikes, what are some of the... Um, people like me who don't really know anything about them, like, oh, those are pretty purple flowers or whatever. <laughs> what are some of the most common ones you'd see along the trail? Okay. Uh, trails kind of in, if you're hiking right. around the Great Falls area. Well, and before you answer that, I'm just yeah. going to make the shout out. Okay. You classify the fl- the wildflowers in here by color. So you can. Oh, yes. perfect. Yeah. yeah. You can find, find yeah. yellow, white ones, <laughs> blue perfect. and purple. Yeah. That yeah. makes it easier. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Well, let's see. Around here, I think one of the most eye catching that people notice who aren't from around are the yuccas. Hmm? Yeah, because oh, it's yeah. something you're thinking like Southwest type yeah. thing. Yeah. And, you know, they're very pointy and you got to watch when you're hiking. But the most spectacular flowers mm-hmm. on those good years in June when we've had a good amount of moisture. And it's just stunning, especially the North Shore Trail and things like that are just absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then there's different, well, loco weed, which is yeah. a very pretty white flower, you know, kind of a low growing. But, yeah, it's very striking. Uh, the peas... They would sometimes call them double peas or cow peas. And mm-hmm. they look like little snapdragons or little oh, peas, yeah. bright, bright yeah, yellow. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. Early in the spring, we're, where we live up on the hill, the prairie is encroaching more, which is absolutely fine by me because I'm not a lawn fan. Yeah. <laughs> but we have a uh, scarlet globe mallow, which mm-hmm. is a very low glo- growing and just has a really pretty flower. And yeah, mm-hmm. there's just, there's so much. And throughout the year, and now all the grasses are coming on. Which is, you know, they're so pretty in their own right. When you start looking at all the textures and the different heights, and it's really, really remarkable. Mm. There was one, and I'm not, I apologize if I'm not going to lead us down this path very well, but you wrote, (laughs) if I remember within the last month, I want to say you shared an article or a photo or something about... I believe it was some type of yellow plant, maybe in the high woods hiking. Oh, the arrow leaf balsam arrow, root, yes, probably. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So in the high woods, of course, the arrow leaf balsam balsam root, which is typically blooms like the end of May, first part of June, depending on okay. the year, and will cover the hillsides. Mm. I mean, just like this huge show. And then you also have, you know, the shooting stars and lupin and you know, all yeah. these different, different, different plants. And the mm. one one thing when you talk about wildflowers in Montana, we have it's at least 22 orchid species that oh are goodness. native in Montana. Wow. I would have never guessed that. Nope. Just with it's orchids. Kind of yeah. Low. Yeah. Huh. I learned that years ago. I took a class at the Glacier Institute in the mm-hmm. park. And orchids. Yeah. And start and then you start looking and there's this white bog, bog orchid, which is very, you know, indescript type thing. 
But yeah, and then the calypso orchids, they also call them fairy slippers and the little belts <laughs> mm. and, you know, the fairy slippers. Yeah, fairy slippers. I have yeah, heard those. Yeah. yeah, and so then there's some in Augusta. I was hoping mm. to go out. There's the Montana Native Plant Society, incredibly knowledgeable group of people. And I was hoping to join one of the members out here a few weeks ago, but I got another book deadline. <laughs> <laughs> and I was heading out to work on that. But yeah, yeah there's some very rare uh, orchids up in uh, near Augusta, near Gibson mm. Dam and everything. Wow. So one of the things that we've talked about in the past, I believe, my memory's not always that good, but the Continental Trail. Yes, the Continental um, Divide. We actually had a gal end up having to leave the trail, come in for some oh. medical assistance okay. in Great Falls, and then needed a, a ride back to the trail. Not a lot of people know about this, but can you give us some information about what the heck this thing is oh, sure. and some efforts that might be working mm -hmm. on yeah. to expand these larger, massive trail oh, systems? Sure. So the Continental Divide Trail runs from Silver City, New Mexico, all the way mm. to, you can either pop out at Goat Haunt or at Chief Mountain at that. So it's well, it's over 3,000 miles long, been around for over 30 years now mm. still some parts that you kind of have a net have to navigate yourself it's not absolutely perfect but 900 eight or 900 miles of it goes through montana wow so a good hunk of it comes through montana mostly on the western side comes through butte and then heads up missoula lincoln is one of our closest mm -hmm. connectors to that so yeah it's absolutely phenomenal they it's the appalachian trail the Continental Divide and the Pacific Crest Trail are called uh -huh. the Triple Crown. Uh -huh. You know, okay. and then of course there's other trails beyond that. And I don't know if you know about the newest is the Montana Trail. This so, hmm. this is you told yeah. me about oh, it. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, yes, I know. Uh, kind of, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but not really. Friend of mine, Marty Bannon, hiked the Continental Divide Trail, and he bicycled the Great Divide mountain bike route so that's from like banff all the way to mexico mm. and they, there is a whole race but then there's also that route and he's done that route and he's done pacific crest trail he's working on arizona all these and he's like montana needs a trail so he you know grow, got a group of us together and we kind of well we did pencil out and worked with onyx maps yeah. the map app uh -huh. and so the montana trail is a visual blue line on that so it comes wow. down part of the continental divide trail just closer to Butte and then starts veering east. And so comes up, you know, Great Falls. Is, it doesn't come right through Great Falls, but the high woods and everything. And mm. then goes up. And then the difference with this trail, with the Montana Trail, is you get in at Fort Benton. And you have 149 miles of river as oh, part of the trail. Cool. And then it continues out east to Fort Union. Wow. So it's, you know... The eastern part of Montana, I always joke around and say, yeah, we're kind of the redheaded stepchild. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we thing. really are. You know, it's like everybody thinks Montana, oh, western they mountains. Think, like, <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But by golly, we have so many mount island mountain ranges. Mm -hmm. The little belts are just absolutely magnificent. The mm -hmm. crazies, you know, yep. all these. And so, you know, it touches on so many of these and really gives the different perspective of Montana, mm -hmm. a real Montana, yeah. in my opinion. Yes. All yeah. components of it, not mm -hmm. just a third of it. Mm -hmm. No. Like the whole thing. Yeah. So you have your mountains and, you know, lots of trees and everything. And then you have the open areas and the river and the breaks. And, you know, it's very, very rugged. I mean, it's far more rugged on the eastern side than I would say on the west. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just you're going with no water for a long time mm -hmm. yep. type stuff. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, west side, you can usually find water somewhere. But no, it's great. And a couple gals hiked. Or well, they actually, and the nice thing about the Montana Trail, it's multi use. So it's not only hiking, obviously, it's the river section and meant for biking too, mm. and horse horses too. Okay. So, and that's one thing we, you know, you definitely, you can't have mountain bikes, of course, in wilderness areas, nor do you want mountain bikes and horses together. Yeah. So that's so just kind of, it's going to be an organic process, kind yeah. of changing as need be. And, but yeah, it's, you know, one of the thoughts with Marty is too, we got to give some of the Eastern towns some love, mm -hmm. you know, everybody else gets all the accolades and yeah. plus yeah. it's really good for Great Falls because we're a really good place to fly in because mm -hmm. if you're going to fly in, you're going to float that section and then complete the rest of it. Yeah. This is a great place to start. Absolutely. Yeah. 
So you can see the work that's been done for that trail so far on Onyx? On Onyx okay. and then is it montanatrail.org okay. is the website for, for the trail. And Great. Yeah. And Marty's That'll always hiking sections. and Yeah. Yeah. So this is more of the extreme people. Mm -hmm. We tend, we Shannon and I, uh, we, not yeah. all of us at the table, um, <laughs> tend to be a little bit more milder in our approach to wilderness. Oh, yeah. Uh, a little bit more of the easy routes. <laughs> but we know there's more advanced opportunities mm -hmm. out there. We're just usually not taking advantage of those <laughs> things. But they're here, and mm -hmm. they are absolutely wonderful exactly. if you take advantage of them. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. even, like, with the Montana Trail, you don't have to do the whole thing. No. Nope. Yeah. And then, of course, with the river, floating the river, any section of it, even if you're floating for a couple of hours or yeah. a few days mm -hmm. yeah. to do that. You know, because, mm -hmm. of course, you know, the section from Coal Banks to Judith or to Robinson Bridge, you know, that's hugely popular, but... By golly, it's just as fun to pop in at Carter Ferry. Mm -hmm. yep. So, or I mean, we're going Cascade and floating, you know, just an hour or two, just yeah. hour here in town. Actually, you oh, know, I got I a group it. of gals together because we have on Facebook too, Great Falls Area Adventurous Gals. Yeah, oh. and that's a friend Carrie started that. But yeah, it's just like, hey, I'm going kayaking at six in the mm -hmm. morning. Who wants to come with me? Type thing, and so we just meet, put in at Portage there, of what Odd Fellows yeah. Park. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just go kind upstream for as long as we can. And then, oh, we got to get to work. Yeah. Go back down. I love that. Mm -hmm. How fun. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's just those early mornings on the river. And I it's might just have so to join. Quiet. And I finally, Absolutely. we finally bought our own kayaks. <gasps> Yay, so I, I need to get a rack for my vehicle. But yeah, I, uh, yeah that's, I might have to do that some morning. Let me just put it out there on record that I find <laughs> it so weird that you guys just bought <laughs> Kayaks. And the reason why yeah. I have to share this, Amy, that her and her husband own Treasure State Outdoors, which are the people who oh, are behind right. the kayak rental the kayak place. Rental, yeah. And I'm like, she was telling us, well, we finally went and bought some kayaks. I'm like, that's so funny to I me. Know, because, that's a good point. But, well, but it's, it's the, the other yeah. ones are like in Rentals. the rental thing for yeah. other people to use. Yeah, that's right. Fine. So it's easier if yeah. we have our own in our garage, we can take wherever, oh, that's not so tie funny. them up. Yeah. But yes, so I could, I suppose at 6 a.m. Yeah. I could go just yeah. get one of my, uh, one of the yeah. kiosks. Because yeah. we've had some other gals go, well, I don't have one. It's like, well, we have this rental program yes, now. That's right. And there's sure life jackets. Yeah. yeah. Yep. No. Life jackets and yep. paddles. All of that. Yep. So yeah, there you go. With, that with is the river yeah. here. We got to take advantage of it. Absolutely. Oh. And I love and that we were just out this last weekend it was the first time we were floating this summer, um, which it could just because it's kind of been a, a weird summer. Yeah. But um, one of my favorite things to do in the summer is just go 30 minutes mm -hmm. outside of Great Falls put in and you just float and by float i mean this wasn't kayaks we got this giant inflatable oh, round funny. Raft. unicorn oh. no oh. <laughs> <laughs> not a unicorn it was actually jason and i's first joint purchase together when Aww. we were dating we bought this huge raft um and just we just float you just hang out and float and it's just it's one of my favorite things to do in the summer because yeah. it's just so beautiful in that canyon right outside great fall it's just it's lovely it yeah. is mm -hmm. yeah there's really no lack of beauty around no. us. Mm -hmm. no. I did um, just kind of want to bring this up. If any like dog lovers oh, are yes. listening to the podcast, which there's some of you, you out be. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we took um, we took our dogs on this raft for the first oh, time wow. and we tested it. So we blew it up on Saturday outside in our driveway and then put them on it because one, we weren't sure if they were going to tolerate it and two, their nails. Yes. Were like, and so they did fine. They did great. They each had their own little life fest. Aww. They did so good. My dog Watson, like literally, it looked like he was like stoned or something. He looked so happy. <laughs> oh, so yeah, funny. he was just like, he was uh, so happy. So much in love. Yes. Oh. oh my gosh, they did so good. Um, but so Amy and I ran into each other. I guess it's been quite a yeah. quite a while now. But she's mentioned her dog Zeke. Yes. Watson and I were doing um, a agility class, just tunnels, and um, we we had both interacted with Katie mm -hmm. in different classes, but there were we were both practicing this one yeah. night together yeah. um and remember seeing zeke running but now you do because around cat. here there are like dog mm -hmm. competitions mm -hmm. that of any level you can come and join anybody can yep. come join yeah. so if you have your dog with you when you're traveling yes. but this is one because i want to ask because i think i should do this with watson or maya but it's yes. called fast cat right yes. where you just go and you let them 
just to see how fast they'll run. 100 meter dash for dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's huh. fantastic. And you yeah. could do $10 fun run. You know, you, if your dog is registered, which Zeke, he's a uh, rescue, a yeah. res dog. Uh -huh. You got him from Rescue Dogs, the yeah. nonprofit. Yep. But you can register all American breeds, they're called That's now, with the AKC. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. And so he's earned his first title in Fast Cat. <laughs> but yeah, Ooh. it's great. It's just every dog single, you know, so they're not running in a pack or that could be really interesting. Like the greyhounds. Yeah, and it's exactly. not that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all fenced off and everything. And they basically cha chase a grocery bag. It's hooked to a <laughs> pulley system. And somebody holds them at the starting line. You know, mom or dad is on the other end calling them and they let them go. And the timer starts. Yeah. And so Zeke, his best run was seven point. Four one four seconds, so it's wow. over twenty seven miles an hour. Holy, Holy cow! Yeah. Holy yeah. He's moving. Yeah, he's, he's a tall drink of water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and a friend of mine who runs sled dogs, or they used to, he's like, "Hey, you know anybody with an ATV? You can really train him. He could be faster. I could tell he could be faster." <laughs> so, and then August thirty first and September first of this year, they're going to do another one, Electric City Kennel Club. Cool. Is, or dog club yeah it's going to do another one so it's at the fairgrounds and fun group of people and you can as long as your dog is registered mm. just to make sure even not, even if they're even not, not okay you could do a ten dollar fun run okay so yeah. you can just show up with yep. your dog just show up with okay. your dog ten bucks a run and yeah and it's then get to hoot. hang out with other dogs that's right which that's, it's my favorite place to be yeah that's that's it. <laughs> yeah and they that do well my favorite it's place. a fun group of people too yeah yeah okay and they well, do we thing. did agility or not yeah. agility a tunnel Mm -hmm. fun event this last weekend too because and with electric city they'll set up different events and you could just pop in and give it a try and yeah. so i tried zeke and intermediate even though we're not quite there <laughs> i should say we i should say me because even though i walked the course multiple times i got there and i'm like oh where are we going <laughs> yeah. and so he he's like mom i, I know. know so the first run was totally me second run i'm like okay i'm getting this i missed one but he did fabulous. Third one, you know, it was hot on Saturday. and I was, was thinking about that because I was like, I think there was that event today. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go, but I was like, man, it's hot, though. Yeah, yeah. and so it's like, okay, this is it, Zeke. Let's just do it. And so he was doing great, and then he saw my friend Katie and her <laughs> fiancé, Zach. He cleared a waist-high fence like <laughs> nothing. He's like, oh, my oh, friends. Yeah. Yes. I see you guys. I know. Hi, 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 hi. So, but it was still, it was still a good time. Cute. Yeah, I know. He's such a goober. Yeah. But you talk about with the water with him last year took him to newland with us because uh -huh. this is our annual trip with friends and you know he was smaller then so we put him in the kayak and we're around the bay and he's doing great and you know did that a few times and he was great so then all of us go out and we're staying closer to shore whatever wild hair he decides to bail the whole kayak <laughs> tips and the boys are laughing because they're like he swam straight to shore he didn't even look back he didn't check, <laughs> he didn't he didn't check on know. mom like <laughs> it's no. we're all in it for ourselves at this <laughs> right? point yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like cross off water rescue yeah. dog yeah right yeah. it's not his like, forte uh, yeah. so this this huh. year he was swimming on his own because everybody's out on their floaties it was very shallow but yeah he had to go out but once again a little look, look at me a little whimper like oh this is not my yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not i don't want to be dog. doing this no. today yeah. like oh but no it's fun it's fun yeah. to get them out and ex enjoy and yeah, yeah still got some hikes coming up you know heading to the park again and want to do grinnell glacier here yeah. in the next couple of weeks because next year that whole area is going to be closed is it it is in the oh, park they're going to do rehab that's good to know so swift current everything okay. closed so i got to do that a few years ago oh, good oh, just gorgeous that's a good yeah. one mm -hmm. and then yeah there's just more and then the little belts and everything you know after the wind that came through yeah you know they really did a phenomenal cleanup job so yeah getting mm -hmm. out on those trails and would really like to get up to baldy mount baldy mm. and nyhart mm -hmm. big baldy it's like the most the it's really an easy way to get to a peak you know, because it's only, I think, a mile and a half from the trailhead to oh, get up there. really? Terrifying drive to get to that trailhead. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, for me, for my husband, who's bombed around these hills his entire life. Yeah. He's like, yeah, no problem. I'm like, 
I don't know. Like, I took no physics. Things. I think we're going to roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he's totally cool as He's a like, you just close your eyes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. But, I'll get you there. Yeah, don't you worry. Right. Yeah. Pretty and, little lady. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the only thing, too. What I love about summer out here is the higher you get, you get the spring flowers again. Mm. Yeah. You know, as yeah. the snow is melting off, it's like, oh, there's glacier lilies and fairy bells. And yeah. da, 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 you know, <laughs> so you get like the redo, the higher up you get. That's neat. So, well, yeah. and the temperature is almost tolerable mm-hmm. the further oh, up yeah. you get. Yeah, yeah right. it's exactly. It's really nice. Yes. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get high and just, well, that's the thing. You got to leave early. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. we're over the 100 degree stuff, but yeah. I yeah. know it's like. It's we'll okay. It's going to snow in like three months. So <laughs> enjoy it if, while you if can. If we're lucky. Yeah, yeah you're <laughs> right. Enjoy it while you can. Yeah. We, sh- we should have snow by September. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We probably, probably yeah. will. Somewhere. Yeah. yeah. But other people too, you know, who are just visiting here, like you said, every season mm-hmm. there's something to do. Of course, our falls are glorious. Yes, I mean, the last and we've actually gotten fall mm-hmm. the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just those perfect temperature, bluebird skies, yeah. everything. And then in the winter, you just got to be ready. You know, a lot of times we can go cross country skiing on the golf course. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, which is yeah, those trees. I mean, it's just beautiful to be able to go around those and you know snowshoeing too you could take it out to the buffalo jump and yeah yeah there's there's a lot to do and yeah. also you can use snowshoes from the Lewis and Clark interpretive mm-hmm. center you know yep. they have that loaner program which is yeah that's which really is great really nice. option mm-hmm. yeah and they're just a phenomenal group of people too yeah. so yeah mm-hmm. very not i love the i love the center great yeah. place well, well, it doesn't seem like there's yeah. m- n- anything here that isn't awesome. No. Is what I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what I'm hearing, too. I yeah. love it. <laughs> and even the wind keeps <laughs> the bugs away. That's it right. Yeah. That's right. I and know. when it's hot, it gives you a little breeze. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's yeah. it. And when it's winter, it just keeps you on your toes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clears the snow away. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, where can people find your articles, your books, your videos? Follow you on socials. Yeah. Yep. I'm on Instagram and Facebook just Amy Greasack, nothing nothing too exciting yeah. there. My website, amygreesack.com, just started a sub stack here a few yeah, months I saw ago. That. Mm-hmm. It's called Nature Calls. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh, I, love uh, that. I love that. Yeah. Name. And yeah. so that's what amygreesack.substack.com. So that I'm doing three basically articles a week. And that's what's wow. hard is because I have like the attention span oh, yeah. of a fruit fly <laughs> and, <laughs> and so many different interests. Mm-hmm. And I mean, truthfully, over my career, I've been paid to learn. Yeah. Yep. So I'm like, uh, I have to good. share it. So mm-hmm. on Mondays, I do, do blah, 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 typically do Monday morning trail report. So mm-hmm. often talking about somewhere where we've gone or also just general hiking or camping advice that nice. a lot of people don't know or, you know, trying to lessen that learning curve mm-hmm. yep. type thing. And then Thursdays is just kind of a nature essay type thing. And then Saturdays, I called a little bit of everything. So it could be on, you know, dehydrating food, to gardening mm. and what have you. Nice. Well, so. I'm going to have to check oh, those thanks. out. I yeah. Need all the information. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Well, no. the nice thing is when you're at these resources that Amy are provi- is providing you, it's from someone who's been out there mm-hmm. doing it. Yeah. It's yeah. not someone mm-hmm. who's just doing research and giving right. it to you. She's done it. First hand yeah. account. Learn from, <laughs> learn from my mistakes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then that way, hopefully, we don't have to make exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, I just did one on filtering water, you know, why oh, it's yeah. important. Yeah. And Grant and I were back in the Bob one year and this, you know, beautiful stream filtering, you know, filling our bottles with our filter in it. And we're like, do we really need to do this? <laughs> yeah. do that? Well, there was a mule deer buck that was dead and half frozen Ew. in uh, the lake above. So, yeah. Uh, so, yes. Yep. So, yes, yeah. you do need to do this. The no answer is always yes. Yeah. Exactly. Because <laughs> that would we, we have the capability to do that now. So, yeah, you just, just do don't know what peed in that water that's moments right. before yeah. you were there. No. That's right. That's the deal. That's the issue. And that's, you know, and my whole thing is you never want to end up as a headline yeah type yeah. thing so don't this do is something the example stupid. of what yeah. not to yeah. do yeah, exactly don't do what amy did yeah. right yeah. exactly <laughs> don't be like but, amy and yeah. that's it it's like my whole goal through life is don't be a headline yeah yeah so mm-hmm. come close a couple of times it's a but good headline yeah. <laughs> yeah good good thing to accomplish that's right trying and your books um you were saying it when you're in town you can mm-hmm. get them at Cassio- Cassiopeia. Millie has them at cassiopeia barnes and noble had them Mm-hmm. And then okay. I have them on my website as well, okay. if great. you can't. But yeah, no, they've been great supporters. And you have another book you're working on. I do. Okay. Yeah. That, Ooh. Yes. That's all we can say. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll look for yeah. it. Yeah. That Exciting. and then working actually, too, on volume two of the Yellowstone book from oh, 1940 nice. to 2000. 
So might awesome. be self-publishing that one. We're okay. just going to have to see how that goes. But we got mostly done. I just have to get this first one out of the way, and then I yeah. get to work on it next. So it's a lot of writing you're doing. It a is. Lot. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. Uh -huh. it's, but it's good. It's yeah, keeps me out of mischief. Because if not, then I build, you know, yeah. <laughs> build all those Otherwise gardens. Otherwise, she's going to go build another 200 <laughs> stone garden. I know. I got my hands on some more stone this <laughs> this spring. Ooh. Yeah. So now I'm just going to build an herb spiral oh. with that. I started it. Oh, that it, sounds cool. Yeah. Once it cools down, I'll get... Last year, I made, or two years ago, a keyhole garden. So it kind of looks like Pac-Man, but there's a basket <laughs> in the middle or for compost. Oh, okay. And so it's kind of a self-feeding. So I made yeah. one of those. I want to build a bigger one now, but I need more rock. Yeah. But I'll do the <laughs> herb spiral first. I'm, and I want to build a labyrinth in the back. Ooh. I've done several articles on those. I'm like, we got a big flat backyard. That, Perfect yeah, for I this. Know. <laughs> I know. You got to do yard garden tours now. Yeah, right, yeah. now pretty, right now the wild lettuce is pretty tall. And that's, that is the hard thing. Is during the summer, like every spare moment, I'm gone. Gone. Yeah. yeah. I'm yep. going to be out because yeah. it's just too short. Yes. It is. It's yeah. kind of panic. We don't have a, we have all of the seasons. Mm -hmm. We just don't have them for a long period of time. Right. Yeah. All of them. Because mm -hmm. when we have those nice long days in May, a lot of times we can't get into the high country yet. Right. Yep. Because, you know, it's still too much snow. And then, of course, with the fire situation sometimes. But yeah, it's like, well, eh, we work around it, just yeah. hit what we can. So, but it's, yeah, oh, we, and, but like you, you know, we said the fall is just, oh, oh, oh gorgeous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just absolutely perfect conditions. And boy, the spring, the flowers in the spring can't yep. be built, beat too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you make it through winter, that's your reward. Yeah. It is. <laughs> that's right. It that's really right. is. So yeah. spring here, you're like, oh, this is why we're uh, here. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. Just when you're not sure if you can do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. One more week and then <laughs> spring comes. And mm -hmm. Then you forget it. Yeah, it's exactly. Like having a baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, that was That's what so I bad. say when people are complaining about the heat. I'm like, just I give know. it a couple months, remember? Yeah. Exactly. Like, then you're yeah. going to yeah. be complaining about the cold. Right. Yeah. But really, what we've demonstrated for you today, any time's a great time mm -hmm. to be in Great Falls. Mm -hmm. Oh, it absolutely And in is. the area. So. Yeah. Start your trips planning now yes. for next spring. Oh, for yep. any time. Or yeah. this yeah. fall or this winter. I don't really care when you come. Yeah. Anytime. No. Uh, just show up. Try it all well, four seasons. And <laughs> the nice thing, too, about people visiting here is the grizzlies are moving east, mm -hmm. but we don't deal with them with the same concentrations as other areas. Yep. So yeah. for somebody who is nervous about that aspect, it's like it's less of a concern. Okay. So yeah. still carry your bear spray because yeah. we got lions too. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got lots of yeah. animals yeah. around here. Mm -hmm. um, but no, bears and bears are fun though. Yeah. I mean, shoes, <laughs> well, they and are. the nice thing is there's usually some sign before you happen upon yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's true. It's usually not just an, you turn the corner and, oh, there you are. Well, which I happens to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? In Glacier, the uh, first time I ever saw a bear was it like we came around the trail and we're like, okay. Oh, hello there. Yeah. Yeah. Howdy. It. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that's what with geographic specialized in grizzlies and mountain lions. So, so Ooh. we'd actually go, you know, and say, can I see the bear report? <laughs> so we knew where to go. <laughs> wow. The lions are the ones that scare me. I had one get my dog outside of, I was coming over here in uh. Augusta and everything to try to film, worked on two programs with lions. Home and Coram, Artie, and he was a 110 pound shepherd Akita mix. Uh huh. Came back in and like all bloodied uh, right above his tail and got oh. him into the vet, and it was the perfect. So the yeah. cat took a shot, but yeah, he had to have surgery and everything. Mm. But mm. yeah, it's like, how many have we walked past? And right. actually, See, that's the thing. I'm like, yeah. I've never seen one, but I've sure they're I've so been stealthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're that's so they're creepy. Stealthy. That's the only mm -hmm. one I've ever sprayed. Was I never had to, I've been charged by Grizzly. But had oh we're gosh. up in Waterton, and it was a female with three young, and they were about her size. We followed them for six plus months, and there's this trail that goes kind of around the around the little town there behind the cabins, and she was back there, and the cameraman was set up and everything. She was 15 feet away from the camera, gathering her hind legs underneath her, just like a house cat. So he gave her a little spritz, but yeah. She went the big thimbleberry leaves, you know, so she didn't get a direct hit and everything, but she took off. Well, good. But yeah, yeah. bear spray is a good thing. 
never it's like american express never mm-hmm. leave home, home without with it, it. <laughs> yeah. it should always be on your hip it is, that's yeah, right that's yeah true. on your hip not in your pack. yeah you're right mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Not, what? Not in it. Yeah. wait a minute let yeah. me get my pack off <laughs> yeah. I'll spray you. Yeah. not that's the way it. that works yeah. yeah but no so you know less concern with people who are visiting here Mm -hmm. so it's a really nice you know because when you're on the trails it's just very more relaxing to people you know because i know people have genuine fear Mm -hmm. which you know you don't need to absolutely but it's just if it's more relaxing more pleasant fear exactly Mm -hmm. then it's more pleasant for people so yeah yeah so we're chill we're chill here with the band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amy, thanks for being yeah, on the thank thank you so much. show with us. Is that what we call this? Podcast. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> on the pod. That's uh, right. <laughs> it has been a pleasure getting to visit with fun. you and thank learn you. all about your um, tenacious history yeah. <laughs> with our fantastic state. It's amazing. And tons of resources for you mm-hmm. to you, the listener, not you Amy (laughs) you the listener to get a bunch of what you need to plan your next trip and And then put her website in the show notes of this podcast thank you Shannon and then the other thing is if you want to find groups of people to do some of this stuff with connect with the resources online Mm -hmm. there's a lot of options so that you don't have to figure it out on your own but if you are going to figure it out on your own like we've said, our friends at Bighorn Outdoor Specialists, our friends at Shields have the maps you can get access to. Um, feel free to reach out. We'll connect you with people who are smarter than us. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're happy to do that. So thank you, Amy. And folks, until we see your bright, smiling, happy, healthy, beautiful faces in our fair city of Great Falls, Montana, we hope you are creating amazing memories with your friends and family wherever the road might take you. We'll see you soon. We are no damn experts is the recorded claims from Great Falls, Montana, covering what you need to know about this amazing damn town. Damn, that felt good.